Ballpoint Pen got started and how Mr. Fisher got started in this crazy industry. And it was decided that I should shut up and do this in front of the camera so everybody could, could enjoy some of this information. I mentioned before that, that I literally lived with Mr. Fisher while we were relocating to the Fisher Space Pen factory, and I had an opportunity to, to get to know this man pretty well. Um, Mr. Fisher was born in 1913. The ballpoint pen hadn't even been in, uh, in, in anybody's imagination. They were using fountain pens. Um, Mr. Fisher, during the World War II, was involved in making the ball bearings, the round ball bearings, for the Bombay doors that would open and drop bombs. After the war, um, Mr. Fisher became interested in this, this thing called the ballpoint pen because he had heard that it was being invented in Argentina by a gentleman named Unigard. Um, it was being invented and it did come over from Argentina and Mr. Fisher was able to get his hands on one but it was too late. It had already reached the United States. It was first introduced at Gimbel's department store in New York City. And, and Mr. Fisher tells me the story, and I, I don't know how accurate it is, but it certainly is funny. He said that the line in front of Gimbel's department store to buy the pen in the front of the store was three blocks long. The line in back of the department store to return it, because it was a piece of crap, was five blocks long. But because there was a line in front to buy it, they made money off of it. Now, Mr. Fisher being a pen man and being involved in, in ball bearings and ball points, they brought him in on this and they gave him one of these pens and they said, okay, Mr. Fisher or Paul Fisher, can you perfect this? He looked at it and he said, the fundamental operation and premise of this ball point is wrong. I'll have no part of it. And they thought it was an, an egotistical statement by him, but it wasn't. Mr. Fisher didn't want to take something else and then redesign it and retool it to make it his own. He wanted to start from scratch. And he didn't start with a space pen. Mr. Fisher started in the ball pen business in 1940. The space pen wasn't introduced until 1967 on the first Apollo mission, which was Apollo 7. That's where this pen, the AG7, gets its name. This is the real McCoy that goes up on all manned space flights. AG stands for anti-gravity. Seven depicts the first manned space flight that took it, which is Apollo 7. So Mr. Fisher's passion to create a writing instrument that can write in the void of outer space was not because he thought there was a market for it. He did it because a friend of his, Gus Grissom, lost his life on Apollo 1. That bothered Mr. Fisher that there were things flammable in that capsule. So this is why this man did this. NASA did not spend two million dollars to create this. Mr. Fisher did. It was not at the taxpayer's expense. It was every dime out of his pocket. Two million dollars to make a writing instrument for a market of seven astronauts. Think how stupid that is in marketing. You wouldn't do that today. You want to make something cheap, price it cheap, sell a ton of them. You don't want to make something that's this extreme, this precise, for a market of seven astronauts and spend two million bucks. So the bottom line here is this is a man that had a passion for something, which is vintage entre entrepreneurship in America today. And we owe him the right to present this with honor and with dignity and to be thorough at it.